Now, probably the biggest file in Patrick McLaughlin's intro is one marked HS2. Now, judging by your tweets and emails to us, well, it certainly is a story that gets a massive reaction from you. Now, in a moment, the anti-HS2 campaign will be putting their case directly to the Secretary of State. But first, Wesley Mallon looks at the winners and losers in this grand project. So, HS2, the technology of the future, a vital boost for Britain's economy, or a giant white elephant stampeding through the countryside, gobbling up tens of billions of pounds of cash. That's certainly the view here on Bonsall Street in Long Eaton. HS2 would come right down this road, requiring levelling all of these houses. So for residents around here, it's not so much not in my backyard, as not through my front room. Valerie Peets lived here for over 20 years. She'll get the value of her home plus 10%. Whoever has got a £400,000 house will get £40,000 uh, compensation for the distress and that. And because my home is only worth about 90, I'll get nine. But my distress is no more different, uh, any less, than what their stress is. And it's not just at bricks and mortar, it might be bricks and mortar to them. But it's not when you've spent 26 years. I've got really good neighbours. I mean, I've got an old lady next door, 83, I look after her. I'm, um, you know, she, looked, she sees to me. I've got my family around here. I'm a mother, I see to my mother who lives about five streets away. I'm not going to be able to afford another mortgage. But for every home that's going to be flattened further up the track, there's a business waiting to cash in. For our particular content, that's in the region of three million pounds. Steve Lee's firm has made a lot of money out of the Nottingham Station revamp and stands to make much, much more if it makes a successful bid on HS2. Alongside many other investments in railway, it's a major opportunity. There are others along that pathway, but um, clearly when it arrives, you know, there is a competition for it. It's not guaranteed that Aspen will win it, but uh, given the, the scope of the work, then it's clearly a major opportunity and something that will knock on in terms of employment. For, for the group of businesses. Dr John Disney from Nottingham Business School has seen all the arguments and comes down just in favour of the big money project. On balance, HS2 still comes out on the positive side. However, we do have to be wary of the increase in costs. Some of the media are hyping this up based on the fact that many projects have over, overrun in recent years. However, the railway industry is getting better at delivering on time within budget. The rail industry might be getting better at sticking to budget, but the money is still coming from the public purse, a point that's not lost on Valerie Peat. My money, my tax, is paying for me to have my house, own house pulled down. It'll be at least 20 years before we even see a high-speed train in the East Midlands, and in the meantime, who knows what obstacles could end up in the way. Now we've been joined by Joe Rukin from the Stop HS2 campaign. We'll hear from Joe shortly, but first of all, Patrick McLaughlin, let's, let's just touch on that white elephant. Now, the project is now estimated to cost £50 billion. Those costs are bound to rise, aren't they? So. Isn't the argument, the, the value for money argument, bound to diminish? Well, what I did a few weeks ago when we had the second reading of the paving bill, I set out clearly what the uh, figures were as to uh, what I've been told as to the, the cost. That included quite a large contingency. It may well be that it comes below that contingency. Below? That's it. Well, it's exactly what happened with the Olympic Games. That hasn't happened on big infrastructure well, it, projects before, though, has it? It happened on the Olympic Games. The, the budget was set and the contingency was there, and it came in below what the contingency was. Look, I, I know that this is a big project. The simple fact is that 15 years ago, there were 750, 750 million passenger journeys. Last year, there was one 1.5 billion passenger journeys. We're seeing more freight on railways, we're seeing more people use the railways. There hasn't been a new railway line built north of London for 120 years. Lillian Greenwood, there, there are surely a host of other transport projects that you would like to see funded and surely the money that's going to be invested into HS2, that could be better spent surely on, on some of those local projects. Uh, and isn't there a danger that, you know, Lord Mandelson's fears that this is what an expensive mistake is going to come true? 
Well, I think as Patrick has set out, there's a huge capacity crunch coming on our railways. Um, and quite rightly, the last Labour government looked at how do we meet that demand uh, for rail travel and concluded that the best way to do that was to build a new north-south rail line. Now, it, it can't happen uh, in isolation. We still need other improvements in our railways and in our transport networks. And, you know, in Nottingham, we're seeing uh, that happening. But if we're going to be ready uh, for the challenges of the future, we have to make sure okay. we've got that rail capacity. Joe Rookin, there you've got the problem surely you've got a transport coalition here that's in favor of hs2 uh, how are you going to stop it? Well, that's the problem, really. We've got a lot of politicians who are in favour of HS2 who aren't really paying any attention to the plan. Well, you've got a top politician here next to you. What's the point you put to the Secretary of State? Well, first off, uh, the Olympic budget, that was a great plan because obviously, which budget were you talking about? The original budget there was 2.4 million, uh, sort of 2.4 billion, and it ended up as 10. But in reality, you should really look at the number of transport experts, the number of people from the rail industry who are now saying that you could deliver the capacity a lot cheaper, a lot quicker, and benefiting a lot more people by investing in the so existing infrastructure. So your question is, I'm going to sound like the Speaker of the House of Commons here, your question is? Why aren't you investing in the existing... I know you're doing H-loss, and I know that there's other investments that Come you can on, look at, but Nelson why aren't you looking at seriously at options like the 51M proposal, like Rail Package 6, all of these things okay. that could Let's deliver capacity a lot answer. quicker? On the West Coast Main Line, north of, of Rugby, there was £10 billion spent on improving that line. It doesn't on overall. It doesn't most overall. Of it it doesn't, it's a Victorian railway system. Yeah, most, yes, most of it was takes, maintenance that hadn't been takes, done for 40 it years. It takes a lot of repair. We spent £10 billion on that line. It does not imp improve capacity. We're spending at the moment £960 million on Reading Station to improve the capacity through there. We are spending money on the existing railway lines. Okay, what, would you, what do you ask kind of Labour's um, kind of shadow rail minister? Because obviously Labour are committed to the scheme too. Well, what I what I say to you is, do you really want to be lumbered with this project with God knows what costs it, it will end up with at a time at which we've got a national debt that is, seems completely unrepayable? Okay, yeah, I think you made your point, Lily. Well, I mean, I think the point, the, the point to be made is how do we get the capacity that we need on our railways? And of course the government need to be uh, controlling costs, and that's one of the issues uh, that we've been raising uh, with Patrick uh, and his fellow ministers. Okay. That's Joe, important. Joe, are, you, are you against HS2 um, because of the route or because you're against high-speed travel? No, I'm against this project and everyone in Stop HS2 is specifically against this project. The problem is that a solution was devised without any attention being paid as to what was in the best interest of this country. Is there and that's why nimbyism here though? No, no. Th th well, that's the problem. that We get, keep getting hit with that tag when people can't actually defend the arguments that we put. Oh, you, can't right. find, you can't find an economist who's for this. You can't find an environmentalist who's for this okay, who isn't. Put, it, put that to the world stage. Well, 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 look, uh, there's a number. Who are funded there, by there's no, there are a number of people who are in favour of, of the argument. Course, look, there is no big piece of infrastructure, and nobody would deny that HS2 is not a massive piece of infrastructure, which is not controversial. Building the M1 was controversial. Building the M6 was controversial. Building the M25, the M40 was controversial. Building the original railways was incredibly controversial. But how many transport this is, experts this is were against in, those projects? Uh, well, they weren't quite the sort of experts there were in those days, but there were some people against them. Of course they were. I mean, You've only got to look at those arguments. In, in Wesley's film who is very much in favour so the academics are backing it too. Well have a look at, well I would say that you know look at uh, Professor John Tomine's uh, uh, evidence to the public, uh, sorry to the uh, Paving Bill Committee this week and absolutely convinced that it's not going to deliver the, uh, the, the uh, promises in terms of regional development but I, I you know the, the one you really want to look at is uh, Adam Mills who was chair of Eurostar when HS2, HS1 was first put in and he was saying the figures were completely made up. He spent two okay. years defending the indefensible, and the whole case for HS2 is away okay. with Let, the fairies. Let's move on to the raw politics here. Um, we've had a lot of response uh, on Twitter and on email. Um, many people, both in the wide Midlands, but also in the Chilterns. Um, now, these are Tory areas, and isn't that the problem that you've got, Patrick? Well, it is. A, look, I, anybody who's directly affected by this scheme, of course, is going to be upset and doesn't want to see it go ahead. But actually, quite often, the attack on politicians and the, the political classes in general is we don't look to the future. Nobody can say that this is not something that is looking a, a long way to the future. We need those connections between our big cities, or else we'll have all the development. At the moment, we're spending the tw almost 20 billion on cross 
Crossrail in London. Well, the, well a huge project, the biggest uh, construction site anywhere in Europe at the moment. We've got to also make sure we've got the connections between our great cities too. Okay. We don't want everything based just in the south. Okay, Lily, and it's a problem for Labour as well, isn't it? Because when I think about some of the highly marginal seats in the Midlands, Erewash, for example, where the line's going to go through, the only party that seems to be robustly against is UKIP. Um, well, we're in favour of building this new high-speed rail line. It's important uh, for dealing with capacity on our railways. It's important for generating the jobs and growth of the future, which people uh, in those marginal seats want as much as they do uh, in our cities. Of course, we need to be sensitive, though, to the views of those people. It is difficult, and we need to get the compensation package right, and the government have got to uh, address that, because that's certainly an issue that came through loud and clear when we uh, took evidence on the paving bill this okay. week. You've heard from the politicians. Where do you take this campaign next? Well, we keep on going and we keep on going. The more that people find out about it, just to the more and more people come out against. You know, we've had MPs come out and say, we were co I was conned by the spin from HS2, and then I bothered reading the evidence. And that's what people have to do, and that's what I would suggest that more and more MPs do, is actually read the evidence that shows it's okay. just going to drag more stuff well, to London. Yeah, thank you very much. We're, we're, we'll obviously more. come back to this uh, in many, many months and years to come, no, no doubt.